Hey guys, welcome back. So today I will be talking about my stats during pharmacy school. From my last video, someone asked about my stats in pharmacy school, which presumably is about how I got into residencies. So today I will be talking about what I did in pharmacy school, which helped me get into a residency program. What I did was I listed down a few things that I thought was important for pharmacy students for them to be strong um, candidates for residencies. And so I've had six things, <laughs> this is five, <laughs> I have six things that you guys should do in pharmacy school, I think. At least these six things should be checked off your checklist and I think you would be in a good position as you apply into residency. And so number one, your CV. I do think um, as a P1, well for my program at least they us on how to fix our CVs, how to properly format and whatnot. I, I would imagine all pharmacy schools would do that. If not, you should definitely start preparing your CVs. It's really important because you will be using that as you apply for residencies in the future. And so early on, whatever you do in pharmacy school, keep updating your CVs because trust me, when you start doing that P4 year, it's hard to remember what you did all throughout the last four years and you might miss something. It's stressful to have to go through an entire CV in one sitting. And so as you progress throughout pharmacy school, keep updating your CV. You will thank me later on. Number two, extracurricular activities. It's good to be involved. A lot of residency programs would also look at that. Um, they want to see that you actually did something outside your classroom. And so I would advise um, if you're a P1 or P2 or even a P3, start getting involved in extracurricular activities, you know, like school organizations, community outreach, um, community service. I do highly recommend that you start getting involved. It doesn't mean that you have to be, let's say, the president of APHA and whatnot. No, like you can be just a regular member, but as long as you show that you're involved, and that's what I'm gonna try to emphasize right now, which is it's not enough that you sign your name and then you sign up for something and then that's it. No, you actually have to go out and be actively participating and then be proactive about the activities of your organization. Why? Because come the interview day, if you were interviewed for residency and someone were to ask you, oh, so tell me what you did um, here, what you talk about your experience um, uh, with this organization, and you want to have something to talk about, and you want to show that you actually did something that you're passionate about. And so my advice is definitely be involved. Um, residency programs, you know, they also, they want to see or they want someone who's well-rounded, who has leadership skills, who knows how to work with people, and not just someone who's smart and has have good grades. Number three is research. It definitely could help you become a stronger candidate if you have research experience. What I recommend is that early on in your career or earlier early on as a student, if you're a P1, P2, or P3, you, what I did was I, I approached my professor and asked him if he needed help on any research I'm working on. Um, he said yes and that's that was my first um, introduction to research in pharmacy school. Um, during my rotations, I also had the opportunity to um, conduct another research um, with uh, my preceptor then. And so there are, there are many ways that you can participate in research. You just have to be proactive about it. You just have to um, actively uh, look for opportunities because it will not just like, it's not something that would just fall into your lap. You have to actively look and search and talk to your professors. I'm pretty sure there's someone out there who would gladly um, accept your offer to help in research and so and that's really important. Number four is pharmacy experience. Residency programs are definitely looking for students who have some sort of experience in pharmacy and it doesn't matter if it's retail or hospital experience. I think it, it's not a deal breaker but it definitely wouldn't, it sure wouldn't hurt you to have that experience. So. Uh, if you can afford um, at least work part-time as a pharmacy intern because that would definitely be helpful for you and it's good for you to have the experience as well. It's for you to have the knowledge of how pharmacy is, what the workflow is, and maybe to get an idea of what 
field of pharmacy you want to go into. So yeah. Number five, this is something that I think you should consider when you're choosing your app keys as a P4 or your rotation as a P4 student. You should definitely be aware, depending on what's, what pharmacy program you're in, for me, when I was in pharmacy school, we had the option to rank which rotations we wanted first throughout the year. Um, so if you want to have like an acute care type of residency, then you definitely want to um, schedule your acute care rotations early on in the year before mid-year so that you have something to talk about um, during interview season um, about your experiences and whatnot. And that's obviously something that you don't have like 100% control over because depending on which programs you're in or depending on how they rank your rotations, it's hard to kind of manage that. But if you can, just be aware of that. My last um, tip, but certainly not the least, is your GPA. You don't have to have a 4.0 GPA, but it does help to, um, especially for you to be selected for an interview to have a higher GPA. So. I think at least a 3.2 GPA um, should be good, or you should try to aim for that. Obviously, higher if you can. Um, some programs will not even consider you if you don't have at least a 3.5 GPA, and so definitely work on that at Dell Pharmacy School. Having said that, just because you have a lower GPA, let's say less than 3.2, it, it, it doesn't necessarily automatically um, eliminate you or eliminate your chances of getting into a residency programs. Um, different programs look for different people. Again, it's all about your whole package, you know, um, being well-rounded and this is going back to you actually being active in pharmacy school, um, being active in community service, um, being active in research. Um, and so if you have the perfect balance, yeah, I mean, you definitely um, could still be a strong candidate. Those are my six, six, I don't know why I keep doing that. Those are my six tips for you guys. So um, if you want to be a strong candidate as you try to apply for a residency in pharmacy school, and let me just say that even if you're not sure if you want to do a residency in the future, it definitely wouldn't hurt you to start preparing yourself as if you were applying for a residency and getting through all these checklists in the event that you decide on the last minute that you want to do a residency, that at least you, um, you're you prepared and you have something you can talk about in your application process and in your interview process. So these things definitely help me get an interview for residency. Now once you get the interview, that's, that's a different story. That's another video, but we'll stop here for now. Hopefully that was pretty helpful for you. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, just write a comment and I'll try to respond to them. Thank you for watching, stay safe, don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you very much for all your support.